Hey guys, welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles! In the last episode, I let you hang with a cliffhanger. And I'm very sorry for that, but I promised that I would upload this episode right after the other one, so you don't miss out on anything. And we're here. In the last episode, we examined uh, what were the names of Mr. and Mrs. Beats, who are this young lady here and this young fella here. And they uh, had a testimony that we tried to refute. And we kind of did, but it didn't really work out. And Barak von Ziegs showed us how things are actually done. But now we stand here and we are about to raise an objection. Because I think that raising an objection here is the only way to go. Just waiting and seeing is not going to save Mr. Natsumi. So I'm going to raise an objection. Let's go! Objection! I'm, I'm not done yet! No, my learned friend. It's over. The last cross-examination was your final chance to establish a credible defense. And you failed. The die has been cast. There is no more room for debate. Well, it might be over as far as you're concerned, but... I can't think of what to say! If I may, Lord Von Ziegs, it seems somewhat boorish to close down the debate at this point. Hmm. Your insignificant little Eastern Isle must be a lawless hole indeed. For a lowly judicial assistant to have the audacity to intervene at a moment like this. Uh, I am, to my shame, still a very inexperienced lawyer. So you will have to forgive me, but I consider my assistant's advice essential and her opinions invaluable. Mr. Narodo! Hmm. One of this land's great guiding principles is tolerance. So the court will hear you, madam. Go ahead, Mr. Sato. Please. Very well. Pray, what insight can you give us? What have we all overlooked in this matter that you see fit to pursue further? Well... The court has been presented with new evidence, but only after the last cross-examination finished. That is true, but I'm going to finish this uh, dialogue before I'm going to check that out. We did receive new evidence in the fourth book. We are going to ex ex examine, ex examine it. Oh, we might actually just do that now. Oh, look at this. Sorry, guys, I'm just going to do it. The book has been badly burned. You're right. You'd never be able to read it in this state, especially not the letter pages. What a terrible waste. Judging from the scorched edges of the paper, I think the damage must have occurred very re- uh, Sorry. Judging from the scorched edges of the paper, I think the damage must have occurred very recently. Hmm. A book recently damaged by fire. Why does that seem to raise a red flag with me? The, four, the fourth book's information has been updated in the court record. A book entitled Blue Lion's Prey, the back cover is badly burnt. So that is something. Uh, is it going to be... It's a book entitled The Lion's Pride. I'm afraid I don't even know any English literature at all, so it wouldn't be something I've heard. Wait a minute. The Lion's Pride? That's strange. Yeah, I thought about um, Mr... What was his name? Gibbons something? We had the uh, dance of deduction about him with Mr. Sholmes, so hmm, I think I've heard a book by that name before, and very recently too. It's a title I recognize too, Mr. Narodo. Yeah, we know where this comes from. So, okay, sorry, sorry to have intervened with the dialogue. Uh, and we're gonna just continue. I see. And you believe that this new evidence warrants further examination, do you? Um, Mr. Naruto, 
What do you think? It's just possible that this new evidence might be the decisive proof we've been waiting for. The judge is sure to ask the members of the jury to announce their learnings and uh, leanings in a moment. And of course, he's sure to ask you to explain what the crucial piece of evidence is and why. So we must take this opportunity to ex examine the newly presented- Yes, yeah, sorry guys, I, well, I went ahead of myself and I already did that. Yes, I understand and thank you, Mr. Sato. This is it. Susato-san has managed to win us one last chance here. I can't let it go to waste. The defense wishes to present evidence, my lord. Very well. The defense may present one further piece of evidence. Evidence that apparently offers a profound insight into this case and, is hi and has hitherto been overlooked. Hi hitherto? What is what kind of a strange word is that? Hitherto? Hitherto? So until now, this means until now, I guess. Sorry. Oh, oh it doesn't really matter. We already checked the fourth book out, so let's just Take present that. it. The evidence in question is what we can see from the newly presented photographic print of the crime scene. The fourth book found in the victim's hand. Objection! We have already discussed the fourth book at length. Oh, other than it being in the victim's grasp at the time of the incident, no significance has been attached to it. Pursuing the matter further would be a flagrant waste of the court's time, as you well know. Uh, hmm, yes, I'm afraid Counsel, I must concur with the prosecution on this matter. When I afforded you the, this opportunity, you led the court to believe that the evidence in question contained a hitherto undiscovered clue. So I must insist that you elaborate, counsel. You will identify this clue at once. Do I make myself clear? Oh, um, yes, my lord. It's, um... Mr. Naruto, I believe the prosecution is trying to avoid a thorough examination of the evidence. Which means, you may very well be on the right track. I, yes, I think you might be right. So, counsel, precisely where is the vital clue to this case, which this fourth book conceals? So, we already did that. And we're gonna do it again here. Let's present this. Oh, it's, it's been badly damaged by fire here, so much that you can't read it at all anymore. That's right, such a pity. And do you see the flaking edges of the burnt pages, Mr. Naruto? I think that's a sure sign that the damage occurred relatively recently. Yes, a book damaged in a recent fire that definitely rings a bell. So Got let's it. present that. I would ask the court to observe the back of the book in question. The back? What do you... Good gracious! It's been burnt to a crisp. So we have to ask ourselves, why was the victim clutching what is clearly an unreadable book? It is undeniably an extremely unnatural thing for her to have been doing. Objection! Unnatural, you say? And what of it, my Japanese friend? Oh! Were I to concede the point if it bears no relation to the case, there is nothing to discuss. So should you wish to assert that this fire damage is some whaled clue as to what happened that day, pray do enlighten us all. What truth does this charred book hide? Charred book. There's just one possibility here, which I can't quite bring myself to rule out. It's an outside chance, certainly, but worth a try. All right, I'll explain my theory. Don't keep us waiting any longer, then, Counsel. Explain this theory of yours. What are you suggesting that you can ascertain from the fire damage the Surrey Tome has suffered? Well, its owner. 
My lord, the burn on the back of this book reveals a startling truth. About the book's owner. I beg your pardon? But we already know who the book belongs to. The victim was grasping, gripping it in her hand as she fell to the floor after all. It's obviously hers. The question of how this book came to be in the victim's hand has yet to be answered. However, as to the question of who the book really belongs to and where it originated, the defense has very credible answers. Good gracious, how can you possibly? Very well. I'll play along with this futile attempt to delay your inevitable demise. But do remember, the members of the jury may well burn you if your little gamble goes awry. Counsel, the defense's response here is very likely to influence the final outcome of this trial. So tell the court, who do you claim is the owner of this burnt book? Well, it's Mr. Gibbons, or what's he called? Um, yes, no, Mr. Garadab, it's Mr. Garadab, so we're gonna present him. The answer is that the book belongs to the couple who own the house where the defendant has his lodgings. A certain Mr. and Mrs. Garadab. The landlords? And whether this is some extraordinary coincidence or some kind of fate at work, I don't know. But, of all the people in London, one of the six chosen for jury duty in this courtroom today is none other than Mrs. Garadab herself. Oh, oh my goodness! Me? I think you must be mistaken, sir! I'm, I'm, I'm not Mr. Garadab's wife! I'm his maid! Things would be so much easier if you would just drop the pre uh, pretense. Alright then, how about a simple question for you? Have you ever seen this book in Mr. Gerdeb's house? I I would never presume to know all of the books he keeps, sir. Objection! This is outlandish behavior. This woman is the accused landlady, you say? You implicate this hard-working member of the public. You besmirch her without a shred of evidence. Your actions are unforgivable. Objection. This is not mere conjecture. The defense happens to know that on the day in question, at almost exactly the same time as the victim was stabbed on the pavement below, Another incident was taking place in the room on the top floor of Mr. and Mrs. Garadab's house. Good Lord! What sort of incident, Counsel? A fire, my Lord. Afraid to say it was, happened in the blink of an eye, you know. The whole place filled with smoke, couldn't see a bally thing. Didn't take long for the fire to spread, of course. The ball of furniture started going up as well. Worst of it is, I lost my favorite book called The Lion's Pride. The Lion's Pride. By Jove, the very same title that's the subject of this debate. Oh dear me. Objection. This is risible. All you've told the court is that a book by the same name was involved in a fire. In which case, it would be reasonable to assume that it was burnt to ashes. And entirely unreasonable to infer that it magically removed itself to the scene of the crime. Perhaps it would make more sense if I told you that the cause of the fire was marital discord. Without going into details, it appears that Mrs. Garadab was considerably enraged. Apparently, she continued to attack Mr. Garadab, even amid the flames. Oh, how awful! Can't even imagine being so horrid to the one, I, the one you love. Can you, Rowley? Absolutely not, sir! But Patricia would never raise a finger against me, sir!
had all my favorite old novels in that case. But as soon as the fire got hold of them, that was it. Whoosh! Up in smoke! Then the wife started hurling things at me. There was I back up against the window under heavy enemy fire. Incendiary books incoming ten to the dozen. The man had his back up against the window? Had he had burning books thrown at him? Goodness gracious, are, are you suggesting that the book was thrown through a window and, and landed coincidentally at the scene of the crime? Objection. No. A thorough investigation of the surrounding area was conducted the very evening of the incident. And there is no report of the Gerdeb's window pane being broken. That's quite true. We also saw no sign of broken glass when we visited the Gerdeb household. But it is not conceivable that the window was open at the time in... Not even remotely. That does not forget the season and the chilling weather that accompanies it. No Londoner would ever leave a window open in the middle of winter. Ah! Hmm... Does the defense postulate the scenario in all seriousness, counsel? Do you earnestly claim that the book found at the scene was a flaming projectile thrown by Mr. Gerdeb's wife? I believe it's a possibility, my lord. That's quite enough. Oh, okay. That's quite enough! Well, I hope that everyone can see you for what you are now, you little foreign trickster! You call yourself a lawyer, but you're just a coward! A mean coward! Really? Claiming that our little tiff set the whole neighborhood ignite? Honestly! Implying that I'm merely posing as a maid for a prince's sake? How could you? It's nothing to do with this beastly case, not any of it! All you've done is sully our family's name! No, I, I assure you that was never my intention. Dragging an upstanding citizen's name through the mud simply to divert attention from your failing defense. I should... I should box your ears! That's what I should do! It's utterly unforgivable! Too right! Here we go. How long have we sat here now, listening to this Nipponese spouting out his fancy foreign theories? But think about it. At the end of the day, the only person who could have possibly have stabbed the victim is that little hunchback with the moustache, and he ran away from the scene too! I do declare you're right. It's true. Yes, what did I tell you? Makes sense to me. Um, sorry, what's that? Well... It would appear that the ladies and gentlemen of the jury are once again in full agreement. What is your position, Lord Von Ziegs? In truth, my lord, I feel these have been unnecessarily protracted proceedings. But then, one must always exercise patience in order to save the best winter. No, wait! The, the mystery of the fourth book still hasn't been... If books are your predil predilection, my learned friend, study them on your way on your own time. What? No, forgive the discourtesy, discourtesy this time? Um, in that case, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will now state your individual decisions regarding the defendant's culpability for the court to hear. Guilty! Guilty! <coughs> Guilty! 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 Thank you for that unambiguous response. That's twice now, it's over! Mr. Naruto, don't give up! Mr. Sato, have you forgotten? The battle isn't over yet. 
You, you, you're not suggesting? Of course. The defense has the right to another summation examination at this point. You could still con convince the jurors to change their minds. You have one more chance. My lord, the defense asked to exercise its right to a summation examination. You believe you still have tricks up your sleeve? I don't intend to trick anybody. I intend to uncover the truth. This is no time to be downcast. As long as there's a chance, I have to stay strong and determined. Well, seems like this first part is over. We haven't reached the half hour mark yet. We still actually have some way to go, but I think this is a nice way to cut this episode into pieces. So, if you want to know how things progress, you'll have to tune in the next time when we once again play The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. See you then.